Okay, hopefully you watched the first video in this little series. If not, there's hopefully I put an annotation up on the screen. And uh, this uh, is software that I wrote, uh, mainly with the goal of uh, calling overtime for firefighters because that's my, my day job, but I'm sure there's other areas that this can be used in. Uh, and today, previous video I should give you a walkthrough. Today I'm going to show you how to install and get at least the database set up. Uh, and then in the next video, we'll probably walk through more of the code. So go to GitHub. My username is MetalX1000. So github.com forward slash MetalX1000. Click on my repositories here and find the one labeled Overtime List. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll click on that. And now you can download uh, the zip file here. But I'm going to recommend uh, getting this uh, HTTPS URL and using uh, GitHub to get clone it. Uh, but whatever you find easier, if you've never used Git before, downloads it might be easier. Using Git uh, might be a little bit easier if you wanted to update it later on. Then uh, in your shell, go to wherever your web server is set up. I type git clone and I will paste in the address, the URL that we just got, and it will clone down the whole project. It is really, really small and as you saw, it took a couple of seconds. Uh, and it looks like it's 55 kilobytes. So very small and uh, so for this project as I just said you'll need a web server I'm running Apache and you'll use um, a MySQL database is what it's using as well as PHP for the server-side scripts so those are three things you want to have installed also optional is uh, PHP my admin is what I suggest uh, for you know maintaining your databases and we're gonna have a little look at that right now so again, those are all in your repositories. Whatever distro you're using, use the um, package manager to get that stuff. Get it up and running if you don't already have it up and running. Now I've logged into my PHP admin here and just for testing purposes, um, I set the default username and password to root and root. Obviously you wouldn't want that on uh, your you know, live machine, you want to use something a little different. So now we need to create a database. Now we can manually do this in here. Uh, according to my script, although you can change it, the database name will be overtime and it'll be two tables in there, overtime list and overtime log. Again, you can create those. Each one of those tables will have six entries in them. The entries will be ID, PID, name, rank, phone number. And then the last one will either be update, updated or date. So you can go through and create all that and I can walk you through that. But I was nice, I made a script that already does this for you. So let's go in here real quick. And as you can see, we downloaded our script and it's inside a folder called uh, overtime list. We'll go in there and list out our files here. And there's this one called credentials. That's the first one you want to go into. So I'm going to use Vim as my text editor, but use whatever text editor you prefer. And I'm going to Vim edit the credentials. Localhost will probably be your server unless you're connecting to a remote server, which normally you'll be connecting to a local server, localhost, if you're running a web server like this. Now, uh, you'll change your username and password right here. Again, I have mine set to default as root root just for this tutorial. That's what it's going to say by default when you download the code. But you'll want to delete here and put in your actual username and password uh, that has the proper permissions for creating tables and databases. Uh, so that's all you have to do in there. There's a script in here uh, called connect. We'll have a quick look at that and which will use that credential script, but also set your your database to overtime. And this is, will be basically in the head of all your connections. Um, but what we want to do is we need to create that stuff. And I did create a PHP script called create DB PHP. So let's create DBP. We're going to look at it first here. It's kind of long, but real quick, just so you can see, it's loading up that credentials. So it's loading up the local host and your username and password. It's connecting. We'll check to make sure it connected properly. And then it's going to create a database called Overtime. Again, you can do this all manually uh, if you wanted to. Um, here it's going to give you whether it was successful or if there was an error. Then we're going to load up our connect. PHP and our tables PHP. There's two tables we're working with. Tables PHP will generate variables for you, table and table two. And here we're going to create those tables. And as I said, there's going to be a table called, or uh, uh, entry called ID, PID, name, rank, phone, and update in our first table. It will 
try to create those, and if not, we'll give you an error message. And we will also create our second table here, which also has an ID, PID, name, rank, phone, but the last entry will be a date entry. And again, it will try to generate that and give you a message of whether it was successful or not. So that's a quick look at it. How do you run it? It's really, really simple. Like I said, you have your web server set up. We're going to go to wherever your web server is. For me, it's localhost, middle x1000 here. And again, over time list. So here we are looking at the same code we're just looking at in the shell. There's one called create DB. We'll click on that and look, it says database created successfully, table over time list created. And the second one should actually say table over time log created successfully. Uh, that's something I need to change in the code. It still creates the table properly. It's just giving the output wrong. So now if we go back into PHP my admin and we click on databases you can see that the overtime database now exists so it did it all for you so all you had to do is click on that in your browser obviously you're gonna to wanna to password protect some of these files um, so that other people don't have access to them and it created two tables here the first table here the overtime list we can look at its structure right here and you can see again that it has those entries we talked about. The ID one is an integer and it's an auto incrementing. Uh, PID is gonna be a randomly generated uh, individual number. Similar, there's ID and I call it a PID. It's just another uh, individual ID that you can generate with your code on the go. Um, and again, we have the, the user's name, their rank, because again, over time, you may be calling people for firefighter over time, driver over time, lieutenant over time, different positions, so you wanna have that. My code right now doesn't really filter through that. That's something you would implement yourself based on your ranking, but should be very simple to add. Uh, their phone number and then updated is gonna be a Unix timestamp, and this is how we rotate the list. So every time uh, the button is clicked, it timestamps that with a new time, which will be a higher number than the old time, because a Unix timestamp is the number of seconds since 19, uh, January 1st, 1970, I believe. So it will continuously grow every second and move that person to the bottom of the list when their name is clicked. Going back to um, here and clicking on our other table, this is our ongoing log. And the only real difference between here is besides the fact that it's not just updating each entry, it's actually adding an entry each time, is that it's structured. The last one, as you can see, uh, it's a little bit bigger. I made it 100 characters, um, which is probably overkill a little bit, but it's going to be an actual date stamp uh, just to keep things simple. It's going to say actually Saturday, November 5th, 2014 at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or whatever. It's going to give you all that information, so it's a little bit bigger. Um, so now that we have that, what we want to do, I'll give you an example here. We'll we can go in here and through PHP my admin. Let me go back here to our databases over time and I'll click on our list here. There's no one in our list right now. So if we were to actually go to our list, like if we were to go back here and click calls, nothing's showing up because no one's on our list. So let's go ahead and add people to our list. So we'll say insert. We'll leave the ID blank. It's going to automatically generate that. PID, we're going to give it a random number. So I'm just going to you know, you're actually gonna probably use some sort of script to input a lot of the information here, but we'll say here, John Smith for the name, rank I'll say firefighter. I'm just gonna put everybody in as a firefighter, because again, just an example here. 555-555-5555. Updated, leave it blank. Again, it was a Unix timestamp right now, it won't be blank. And as you click on their names, it will rotate them through the list. You can sort people through the actual interface when the time comes. Again, for the PID, we'll give it a random whatever. Uh, for their name, I'll just say Peter Parker. Rank, again, I'll say firefighter. Phone number, this I'll say 555-555-5556, whatever, and leave the update blank, updated blank. And we'll click go, and it has added those two entries. If we go to browse, you can now see those entries added. And if we go back to our call list and hit F5 to refresh, there are the names. Now you notice again, uh, right now the updated is a null number. If I click on the first entry there and I refresh this page, you can see that now there's an entry in there. If I click the next name now and refresh in here, 
you can see there's a timestamp. So each time I click it, it's going to update that number. It's going to be a higher number because, again, it's based on the date and time. So just to speed things along, there's another little script that I put into our code here. If we go back to our shell, so if you just want to test out the program and you don't want to enter in all your employees, which you can actually, hopefully you have some sort of contact list you can import it from. If we list out here, there is a test sh. Now you're going to want to modify one variable in it because uh, right now I'm local host, but everything's in a folder called Metal X1000. So you might want to change that. If it's in your root folder, just remove that part. Besides that, this will generate random fake people for you. So I'll just say, uh, I'll run it like that. Gave me some output telling me what it entered. If we come back here and I refresh this page, you can see that people have been added in. If I go to the call time list and refresh here, you can see a random name and number has been added in. So you can run this script a couple of times. This test bash script. And now again, if we come in here and refresh, you can see that we just generated a bunch of fake names uh, and phone numbers uh, in our database for testing. So if you want to test this out before you actually implement it and take the time of entering everyone's numbers. And again, we can click through the list here and that will actually cancel or z not zero everybody out, but give everybody a unique, well, sometimes unique. Again, it's based on seconds. If I click the same name within a second, it's going to give it the same name there. Um, but that is getting it all set up. You're good to go. Uh, in the next video, we'll actually look at some of the other scripts and actually go into the details on how they work. That way you can modify it again. I know where I live, there's different fire departments and each of them do things different, especially their overtime lists are all work different ways. And so although this program is pretty much fully functional, you'll probably have to tweak it based on your rules, regulations, and or contract. Um, so I'll give you an overview of the code so that you can understand how it works and um, modify it for your use. So that'll be in the next video. And hopefully I've remembered to put some annotations on the screen to that next video and probably uh, hopefully an annotation for the full playlist um, for this software here so you can view it. Uh, thank you for watching. Again, my website is filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description. Go ahead and check that out. If you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. I truly appreciate it. And as always, have a great day.